the twenty-second book of the odysseys of homer translated by george chapman the argument the wooers in minerva's sight slain by ulysses all the light and lustful housewives by his son and servants are to slaughter done another argument chi the end of pride and lawless lust is wretched tried with slaughters just the upper rags that wise ulysses wore cast off he rusheth to the great hall door with bow and quiver full of shafts which down he poured before his feet and thus made known his true state to the wooers this strife thus hath harmless been decided now for us there rests another mark more hard to hit and such as never man before hath smit whose full point likewise my hands shall assay and try if phoebus will give me this day he said and off his bitter arrow thrust right at antinous and struck him just as he was lifting up the bowl to show that twixt the cup and lip much ill may grow death touched not at his thoughts at feast for who would think that he alone could perish so amongst so many and he best of all the arrow in his throat took full his fall and thrust his head far through the other side down fell his cup down he down all his pride straight from his nostrils gushed the human gore and as he fell his feet far overbore the feastful table all the roast and bread about the house strewed when his high-born head the rest beheld so low up rushed they all and ransacked every corner of the hall for shields and darts but all fled their far reach then fell they foul on him with terrible speech and told him it should prove the dearest shaft that ever passed him and that now was saft no shift for him but sure and sudden death for he had slain a man whose like did breathe in no part of the kingdom and that now he should no more for game strive with his bow but vultures eat him there these threats they spent yet every man believed that stern event chanced gainst the author's will o oh, fools to think that all their rest had any cup to drink but what their great antinous began he frowning said dogs see in me the man ye all held dead at troy my house it is that thus ye spoil and thus your luxuries file with my women's rapes in which ye woo the wife of one that lives and no thought show of man's fit fear or god's your present fame or any fair sense of your future name and therefore present and eternal death shall end your base life this made fresh fears breathe their former boldness every man had eye on all the means and studied ways to fly so deep deaths imminent but seeing none eurymachus began with suppliant moan to move his pity saying if you be this isle's ulysses we must all agree in grant of your reproof's integrity the greeks have done you many a wrong at home at field as many but of all the sum lies here contract in death for only he imposed the whole ill offices that we are now made guilty of and not so much sought his endeavours or in thought did touch at any nuptials but a greater thing employed his forces for to be our king was his chief object his sole plot it was to kill your son which jove's hand would not pass but set it to his own most merited end in which end your just anger nor extend your stern reek further spend your royal powers in mild ruth of your people we are yours and whatsoever waste of wine or food our liberties have made we'll make all good in restitutions call a court and pass a fine of twenty oxen gold and brass on every head and raise your most rate still till you are pleased with your confessed fill which if we fail to tender all your wrath it shall be justice in our bloods to bathe eurymachus said he if you would give all that your fathers hoard to make ye live and all that ever you yourself possess or shall by any industry increase i would not cease from slaughter till your bloods had brought out your intemperance in my goods it rests now for you that you either fight that will scape death or make your way by flight in whose best choice my thoughts conceive not one shall shun the death your first hath undergone this quite dissolved their knees 
eurymachus enforcing all their fears yet counselled thus o friends this man now he hath got the bow and quiver by him ever will bestow his most inaccessible hands at us and never leave if we avoid him thus till he hath strewn the pavement with us all and therefore join we swords and on him fall with tables forced up and borne in opposed against his sharp shafts when being round enclosed by all our onsets we shall either take his horrid person or for safety make his rage retire from out the hall and gates and then if he escape we'll make our states known to the city by our general cry and thus this man shall let his laugh shaft fly that ever his hand vaunted thus he drew his sharp-edged sword and with a table flew in on ulysses with a terrible throat his fierce charge urging but ulysses smote the board and cleft it through from end to end borne at his breast and made his shaft extend his sharp head to his liver his broad breast pierced at his nipple when his hand released forth with his sword that fell and kissed the ground with cups and victuals lying scattered round about the pavement amongst which his brow knocked the embrued earth while in pains did flow his vital spirits till his heels shook out his feastful life and hurled a throne about that way laid death's convulsions in his feet when from his tender eyes the light did fleet then charged Anfinimus with his drawn blade the glorious king in purpose to have made his feet forsake the house but his assay the prince prevented and his lance gave way quite through his shoulder at his back his breast the fierce pile letting forth his ruin pressed groans from the pavement which his forehead struck telemachus his long lance then forsook left in Anfinimus, and to his sire made fiery pass not staying to acquire his lance again in doubt that while he drew the fixed pile some other might renew fierce charge upon him and his unharmed head cleave with his back-drawn sword for which he fled close to his father bade him arm and he would bring him shield and javelins instantly his own head arming more arms laying by to serve the swineherd and the oxherd valor well armed is ever most preferred run then said he and come before the last of these auxiliary shafts are passed for fear lest left alone they forced my stand from forth the ports he flew and brought to hand eight darts four shields four helms his own parts then first put in arms he furnished both his men that to their king stood close but he as long as he had shafts to friend enough was strong for all the wars and some one man still he made make even with the earth till all a hill had raised in the even floored hall his last shaft spent he set his bow against the beam and went to arm at all parts while the other three kept off the wooers who unarmed could be no great assailants in the well-built wall a window was thrust out at end of all the house's entry on whose utter side there lay a way to town and in it wide and two-leaved folds were forged that gave fit mean for flyers out and therefore at it then ulysses placed eumaeus in close guard one only pass ope to it which prepared in this sort by ulysses gainst all pass by agelaus's tardy memory was in question called who bade some one ascend at such a window and bring straight to friend the city with his clamour that this man might quickly shoot his last this no one can make safe access to said melanthius for tis too near the hall's fair doors whence thus the man afflicts ye for from thence there lies but one straight passage to it that denies access to all if any one man stand being one of courage and will countermand our offer to it but i know a way to bring you arms from where the king doth lay his whole munition and believe there is no other place to all the armories both of himself and son this said a pair of lofty stairs he climbed and to the affair twelve shields twelve lances brought as many casks with horsehair plumes and set to bitter tasks both son and sire then shrunk ulysses knees and his loved heart when thus in arms he sees so many wars and their shaken darts 
for then the work showed as it asked more parts to safe performance and he told his son that or melanthius or his maids had done a deed that foul war to their hands conferred o oh, father replied he tis i have erred in this caused labour i and none but i that left the door ope of your armoury but some it seems hath set a sharper eye on that important place eumaeus haste and shut the door observing who hath passed to this false action any maid or one that i suspect more which is dolius's son while these spake thus melanthius went again for more fair arms when the renowned swain eumaeus saw and told ulysses straight it was the hateful man that his conceit before suspected who had done that ill and being again there asked if he should kill if his power served or he should bring the swain to him to inflict on him a several pain for every forfeit he had made his house he answered i and my telemachus will here contain these proud ones in despite how much soever these stolen arms excite their guilty courages while you two take possession of the chamber the doors make sure at your back and then surprising him his feet and hands bind wrapping every limb in pliant chains and with a halter cast above the wind-beam at himself made fast aloft the column draw him where alive he long may hang and pains enough deprive his vexed life before his death succeed this charge soon heard as soon they put to deed stole on his stealth and at the further end of all the chamber saw him busily bend his hands to more arms when they still at door watched his return at last he came and bore in one hand a fair helm in the other held a broad and ancient rusty rested shield that old laertes in his youth had worn of which the cheek-bands had with age been torn they rushed upon him caught him by the hair and dragged him in again whom crying out they cast upon the pavement wrapped about with sure and pinching cords both foot and hand and then in full act of their king's command a pliant chain bestowed on him and hauled his body up the column till he scaled the highest wind-beam where made firmly fast eumaeus on this just infliction passed this pleasurable cavil now you may all night keep watch here and the earliest day discern being hung so high to rouse from rest your dainty cattle to the wooer's feast there as befits a man of mien so fair soft may you sleep not under you but air and so long hang you thus they left him there made fast the door and with ulysses were all armed in the instant then they all stood close their minds fire breathed in flames against their foes four in the entry fighting all alone when from the hall charged many a mighty one but to them then jove's seed minerva came resembling mentor both in voice and frame of manly person passing well a paid ulysses was and said now mentor aid gainst these odd mischiefs call to memory now my often good to thee and that we too of one year's life are thus he said but thought it was minerva that had ever brought to her side safety on the other part the wooers threatened but the chief in heart was agelaus who to mentor spake mentor let no words of ulysses make thy hand a fighter on his feeble side against all us wooers for we firm abide in this persuasion that when sire and son our swords have slain thy life is sure to run one fortune with them what strange acts hast thou conceit to form here thy head must bestow the reek of theirs on us and when thy powers are taken down by these fierce steels of ours all thy possessions indoors and without must raise on heap with this and all thy rout of sons and daughters in thy turrets bleed reek offerings to us and our town stand freed of all charge with thy wife minerva's heart was fired with these braves the approved desert of her ulysses chiding saying no more thy force nor fortitude as heretofore will gain thee glory when nine years at troy white-wristed helen's rescue did employ thy arms and wisdom still and ever used the bloods of thousands through the field diffused by thy vast valour priam's broad-wayed town by thy grave parts was sacked and overthrown 
and now amongst thy people and thy goods against the wooers base and petulant bloods stints thou thy valour rather mourning here thy manly fighting come friend stand we near and note my labour that thou mayest discern amongst thy foes how mentor's nerves will earn all thy old bounties this she spake but stayed her hand from giving each way often swayed uncertain conquest to his certain use but still would try what self-powers would produce both in the father and the glorious son then on the wind-beam that along did run the smoky roof transformed minerva sat like to a swallow sometimes cuffing at the swords and lances rushing from her seat and up and down the troubled house did beat her wing at every motion and as she had roused ulysses so the enemy damaster's son excited polybus and phinemus and demoptolemus eurynemus and polycterides for these were men that of the wooing priests were most egregious and the clearly best in strength of hand of all the desperate rest that yet survived and now fought for their souls which straight swift arrows sent among the fowls but first the master's son had more spare breath to spend on their excitements ere his death and said that now ulysses would forbear his dismal hand since mentor's spirit was there and blew vain vaunts about ulysses ears in whose trust he would cease his massacres rest him and put his friends huge boasts in proof and so was he beneath the entry's roof left with telemachus and the other two at whom said he discharge no darts but throw all at ulysses rousing his faint rest whom if we slaughter by our interest in jove's assistance all the rest may yield our powers no care when he strews once the field as he then willed they all at random threw where they supposed he rested and then flew minerva after every dart and made some strike the threshold some the walls invade some beat the doors and all acts rendered vain their grave steel offered which escaped again came on ulysses saying o oh, that we the wooers troop with our joint archery might so assail that where their spirits dream on our deaths first we first may slaughter them thus the much sufferer said and all let fly when every man struck dead his enemy ulysses slaughtered demoptolemus euryades by young telemachus his death encountered good eumaeus slew elatus and philetius overthrew pisander all which tore the paved floor up with their teeth the rest retired before their second charge to inner rooms and then ulysses followed from the slaughtered men their darts first drawing while which work was done the wooers threw with huge contention to kill them all when with her swallow wing minerva cuffed and made their javelins ring against the doors and thresholds as before some yet did graze upon their marks one tore the prince's wrist which was amphimedon the extreme part of the skin but touched upon ctesippus over good eumaeus's shield his shoulder's top did taint which yet did yield the lance free pass and gave his hurt the ground again then charged the wooers and girt round ulysses with their lances who turned head and with his javelin struck eurydamus dead telemachus dislived amphimedon eumaeus polybus Philetius won Ctesippus's bosom with his dart, and said, in quittance of the jester's part he played, the neat's foot hurling at Ulysses, Now, great son of Polytherses, you that vow your wit to bitter taunts, and love to wound the heart of any with a jest, so crowned your wit be with a laughter, never yielding to fools in folly, but your glory building on putting down in fooling, spitting forth puffed words of all sorts, cease to scoff at worth and leave revenge of vile words to the gods since their wits bear the sharper edge by odds and in meantime take the dart i drave for that right hospitable foot you gave divine ulysses begging but his own thus spake the black ox herdsman and straight down ulysses struck another with his dart the master's son telemachus did part just in the midst the belly of the fair evenor's son his fierce pile taking air out at his back flat fell he on his face his whole brows knocking and did mark the place 
and now manslaughtering pallas took in hand her snake-fringed shield and on that beam took stand in her true form where swallow-like she sat and then in this way of the house and that the wooers wounded at heart with fear fled the encounter as in pastures where fat herds of oxen feed about the field as if wild madness their instincts impelled the high-fed bullocks fly whom in the spring when days are long gad bees or breezes sting ulysses and his son the flyers chased as when with crooked beaks and sears a cast of hill-bred eagles cast off at some game that yet their strength keep but put up in flame the eagle stoops from which along the field the poor fowls make wing this and that way yield their hard-flown pinions then the clouds essay for scape or shelter their forlorn dismay all spirit exhaling all winged strength to carry their bodies forth and trust up to the quarry their falconers ride in and rejoice to see their hawks perform a flight so fervently so in their flight ulysses with his air did stoop and cuff the wooers that the air broke in vast sighs whose heads they shot and cleft the pavement boiling with the souls they reft Lyades, running to ulysses took his knees and thus did on his name invoke ulysses let me pray to thee my place afford the reverence and to me the grace that never did or said to any dame thy court contained or deed or word to blame but others so affected i have made i lay down their insolence and if the trade they kept with wickedness have made them still despise my speech and use their wanted ill they have their penance by the stroke of death which their desert divinely warranteth but i am a priest amongst them and shall i that not hath done worth death amongst them die from thee this proverb then will men derive good turns do never their mere deeds survive he bending his displeased forehead said if you be priest among them as you plead yet you would marry and with my wife too and have descent by her for all that woo wish to obtain which they should never do dame's husband's living you must therefore pray of force and oft in court here that the day of my return for him might never shine the death to me wished therefore shall be thine this said he took a sword up that was cast from agelaus having struck his last and on the priest's mid-neck he laid a stroke that struck his head off tumbling as he spoke then did the poet phemius whose surname was called terpiades who thither came forced by the wooers fly death but being near the court's great gate he stood and parted there into his counsels either to remove and take the altar of hercyon jove made sacred to him with a world of art engraved about it where were wont to impart laertes and ulysses many a thigh of broad-browed oxen to the deity or venture to ulysses clasp his knee and pray his ruth the last was the decree his choice resolved on twixt the royal throne and that fair table that the bowl stood on with which they sacrificed his harpy laid along the earth the king's knees hugged and said ulysses let my prayers obtain of thee my sacred skill's respect and ruth to me it will hereafter grieve thee to have slain a poet that doth sing to gods and men i of myself am taught for god alone all sorts of song hath in my bosom sown and i as to a god will sing to thee then do not thou deal like the priest with me thine own love's son telemachus will say that not to beg here nor with willing way was my access to thy high court addressed to give the wooers my song after feast but being many and so much more strong they forced me hither and compelled my song this did the prince's sacred virtue hear and to the king his father said forbear to mix the guiltless with the guilty's blood and with him likewise let our mercy save medon the herald that did still behave himself with care of my good from a child if by eumaeus yet he be not killed or by philetius nor your fury met while all this blood about the house is sweat this met on heard as lying hid beneath a throne set near half dead with fear of death 
a new flayed oxhide as but there thrown by his serious shroud made he lying there to fly but hearing this he quickly left the throne his oxhide cast as quickly and as soon the prince's knees seized saying o my love i am not slain but here alive and move abstain yourself and do not see your sire quench with my cold blood the unmeasured fire that flames in his strength making spoil of me his wrath's right for the wooer's injury ulysses smiled and said be confident this man hath saved and made thee different to let thee know and say and others see good life is much more safe than villainy go then sit free without from death within this much renowned singer from the sin of these men likewise quit both rest you there while i my house purge as it fits me here this said they went and took their seat without at jove's high altar looking round about expecting still their slaughter when the king searched round the hall to try life's hidden wing made from more death but all laid prostrate there in blood and gore he saw whole shoals they were and lay as thick as in a hollow creek without the white sea when the fishers break their many meshed draught net up their live fish frisking on the sands and fain the dry wood for the wet change but the all-seeing beam the sun exhales hath sucked their lives from them so one by other sprawled the wooers there ulysses and his son then bid appear the nurse eurycleia to let her hear his mind in something fit for her affair he oped the door and called and said repair grave matron long since born that art our spy to all this house's servile housewifery my father calls thee to impart some thought that asks thy action his word found in naught her slack observance who straight oped the door and entered to him when himself before had left the hall but there the king she viewed amongst the slain with blood and gore embrued and as a lion skulking all in night far off in pastures and come home all dight in jaws and breastlocks with an ox's blood new feasted on him his looks full of mood so looked ulysses all his hands and feet freckled with purple when which sight did greet the poor old woman such works being for eyes of no soft temper out she break in cries whose vent though throughly opened he yet closed called her more near and thus her plaints composed forbear nor shriek thus but vent joys as loud it is no piety to bemoan the proud though ends befall them moving ne'er so much these are the portions of the gods to such men's own impieties in their instant acts sustain their plagues which are with stay but racked but these men gods nor men had in esteem nor good nor bad had any sense in them their lives directly ill were therefore cause that death in these stern forms so deeply draws recount then to me those licentious dames that lost my honour and their sex's shames i'll tell you truly she replied there are twice five and twenty women here that share all work amongst them whom i taught to spin and bear the just bands that they suffered in of all which only there were twelve that gave themselves to impudence and light behave nor me respecting nor herself the queen and for your son he hath but lately been of years to rule nor would his mother bear his empire where her women's labours were but let me go and give her notice now of your arrival sure some god doth show his hand upon her in this rest she takes that all these uproars bears and never wakes nor wake her yet said he but cause to come those twelve light women to this utter room she made all utmost haste to come and go and bring the women he had summoned so then both his swains and son he bade go call the women to their aid and clear the hall of those dead bodies cleanse each board and throne with wetted sponges which with fitness done he bade take all the strumpets twixt the wall of his first court and that room next the hall in which the vessels of the house were scoured and in their bosoms sheathed their every sword till all their souls were fled and they then felt twas but pain to sport with lawless men this said the women came all drowned in moan and weeping bitterly but first was done the bearing thence the dead 
all which beneath the portico they stowed where death on death they heaped together then took all the pains ulysses willed his son yet and the swains with paring shovels wrought the women bore their parings forth and all the clotted gore the house then cleansed they brought the women out and put them in a room so walled about that no means serve their sad estates to fly then said telemachus these shall not die a death that lets out any wanton blood and vents the poison that gave lust her food the body cleansing but a death that chokes the breath and altogether that provokes and seems as bellows to abhorred lust that both on my head poured depraves unjust and on my mother's scandling the court with men debauched in so abhorred a sort this said a halser of a ship they cast about a cross-beam of the roof which fast they made about their necks in twelve parts cut and haled them up so high they could not put their feet to any stay as which was done look how a mavis or a pigeon in any grove caught with a springer net with struggling pinions gainst the ground doth beat her tender body and that then straight bed is sour to that swing in which she was bred so strive these taken birds till every one her pliant halter had enforced upon her stubborn neck and then aloft was hauled to wretched death a little space they sprawled their feet fast moving but were quickly still then fetched they down melanthius to fulfil the equal execution which was done in portal of the hall and thus begun they first slit both his nostrils cropped each ear his members tugged off which the dogs did tear and chopped up bleeding sweet and while red-hot the vice abhorring blood was off they smote his hands and feet and there that work had end then washed they hands and feet that blood had stained and took the house again and then the king euryclea calling bade her quickly bring all ill-expelling brimstone and some fire that with perfumes cast he might make entire the house's first integrity in all and then his timely will was she should call her queen and ladies still yet charging her that all the handmaids she should first confer she said he spake as fitted but before she held it fit to change the weeds he wore and she would others bring him that not so his fair broad shoulders might rest clad and show his person to his servants was to blame first bring me fire said he she went and came with fire and sulphur straight with which the hall and of the huge house all rooms capital he throughly sweetened then went nurse to call the handmaid servants down and up she went to tell the news and willed them to present their service to their sovereign down they came sustaining torches all and poured a flame of love about their lord with welcomes home with huggings of his hands with laboursome both heads and foreheads kisses and embraces and plied him so with all their loving graces that tears and sighs took up his whole desire for now he knew their hearts to him entire end of the twenty-second book